Hi there. In today's video, I'll be conducting a stress test on two Bofeng models, the AR-152 and the UV-5R. This stress test will follow the same format from episode 8. To recap what that is, it will include mixing the radios in a bucket of sand, leaving them outdoors packed in snow overnight, a drop test from 3 feet, a dunk tank, and if they last that long, Finally, I'll fire a round of number eight shot at them from a distance of approximately 25 feet. The AR-152 is ingress protection rated for dust and water, and as we know, the UV-5R is not. As in episode eight, although the UV-5R is not an apples-to-apples -apples comparison to this IP-rated AR-152, the reason I'm including it again is it held up well in episode eight against IP-rated radios, and this is also an opportunity to expand the sample size of testing the UV-5R. As an episode 8 stress test, I'll post a link in the description below that explains IP ratings in more detail. But the AR-152 touts an IP-54 rating, as well as advertisements claiming it's waterproof. For some context, if you'll recall in episode 8, the UV-9R and GT3WP were advertised with an IP67 rating. Aside from the IP ratings, the AR-152 is similar to the UV-5R in that they operate on the same frequency range, have the same 128 channel capacity and menu functions. I've heard some people make comments that it's a repackaged UV-5R, and although it does share the same menu functions as the UV-5R, I'm not sure I would totally agree with that statement. One of the things I like about this radio is it appears to have three charging methods via wall charger, car charger, or USB. It's also noticeably larger than the UV-5R and measures approximately 17 inches from the base of the radio to the antenna, and it's approximately three inches wide. Based on the overall appearance of this radio, it seems Bofeng is trying to style the AIR-152 after the Harris handheld transceivers used by the military. Bofeng also claims this radio has a maximum transmit power of 15 watts. And while researching this radio, I came across another YouTube channel by the name of Ham Radio 2.0 that did a review of this uh, uh, particular radio. And I'll leave a link below to that video. But the AR-152's power levels were tested, and in the video, right around 11 minutes, 30 seconds, the radio was tested against a meter, and according to that bench test, it wasn't able to achieve the advertised 15 watts of transmit power. Among the three levels of transmit power, low was approximately 1 watt, mid was approximately 4 watts, and high was approximately 6.4, and the reason I'm saying approximately is because it was tested on both 2 meters and 70 centimeters and had slightly different results based on uh, which band it was being tested on. So after I finish unboxing the radios, I'll program each one to my 2 meter repeater like I did in episode 8, as well as the weather channel, so I can turn the radios on uh, during some of the tests and just show you that they're working. Following each test, I'll confirm if the HTs are still able to transmit and receive and report the results prior to the next test. Okay, I use the Chirp software to program both radios and they're ready for the stress test. I did want to mention that when I was programming the AR-152, there was not a drop-down menu option for that radio. And I consulted the Chirp website, and the documentation suggests using the UV-5R menu option. After selecting that option from the menu, I was able to successfully program the radio. It looks like Chirp has made some changes recently to the user interface of their software. 
they added some features and included some bug fixes for this latest version, which is called Chirp Next. However, according to their website, not all of the radio drivers have been converted over yet, and older versions of their software, which is called Chirp Daily, are still available on their site, but it looks like they're going to sunset that version and direct their development efforts towards the Chirp Next version. Based on this information, my assumption is as Chirp moves forward with converting more radio drivers, you'll see a drop-down menu in Chirp Next for the AR-152, as well as other radio brands and models. I didn't have any issues programming the AR-152 with Chirp Next or selecting the UV-5R menu option, and if you're interested in the steps to programming a UV-5R or an AR-152, then check out Episode 3. Although the version of Chirp I'm using in that episode is the older Chirp Daily version, the concept is the same as it is with Chirp Next. So I've confirmed each radio is functioning as expected, and I'm able to transmit and receive, and we will now move on to the sand test. For the first test, I'll mix the radios around in a bucket of sand and let them sit for a few minutes. as. With the radios in episode 8, I'm not expecting anything catastrophic to happen to these radios as a result, and I'm anticipating they'll pass with flying colors. So the first one up is the UV-5R. And we'll put that in there. And next is the AR-152. This is a big radio. I didn't realize how big of a radio this thing was until I started putting it together. Okay. good enough. So I'll let those sit and I will report the results of the test right before the next stress test. Following the sand test I can report each of the radios still function, they're still able to transmit and receive, and uh, the next test will be to see how the radio holds up when I leave them packed in snow overnight. The weather in my area has been a little colder at night since I uh, did episode 8. The temperature has been in the 9 degree to 30 degree Fahrenheit range. So uh, other than just a little bit of sand on the radio, you can see it still functions. And uh, there's just some sand that built up in the, the keypad and just around the volume knob, but uh, that's about it. So we pack this one first. And then the uh, AR-152, well, you can see that one still works as well. And this one's just got some sand kicked around the, the keypad as well. Uh, other than that, we'll pack this one in next. And I'll revisit this in about 24 hours. The temperature last night was a low of 26 degrees Fahrenheit, and following the snow test, I can report that after being left out in the elements for 24 hours, the radio still function as expected, and they're able to transmit and receive. I have each one set to the weather channel right now, and I'll turn the volume up on each just to show you that they're still working. So first, the UV-5R, and the AR-152. The next test will be the dunk tank. I'll submerse the radios for approximately 15 minutes and we'll see how they do. But other than just some uh, stiffness in the keypads and when turning the uh, power on and off and adjusting the volume knob, that, that's really uh, the only effect that I could observe from being left out in the snow. So we'll move on to the next test. 
Okay, first in the dunk tank is the AR-152. And now the UV-5R. After pulling the AR-152 and UV-5R from the dunk tank, I let them dry for approximately 24 hours, just like I did for the radios in Episode 8. I'll begin with the UV-5R. To recap, no issues with the sand test or being left out in the elements packed in snow overnight. During the dunk test, this was the first radio to show signs of being affected by immersion. Air bubbles were observed leaking from the top of the radio around the volume knob, as well as the area around the antenna. After approximately less than a minute of being in the tank, the display and light on top went dark. However, unlike the UV-5R from Episode 8, I'm not noticing any distortion to the display or condensation. The radio appears to have dried out fairly well. However, the original battery did short out. After drying out, I placed it on a charging cradle. It was able to power up the radio for a brief period of time but ultimately it died, so I replaced it with a new battery. The only other issue I encountered was when I powered the radio up, the audio was not very clear, so to give the radio a fighting chance, I took a can of air, I sprayed the uh, area around the speaker to try and uh, get rid of any excess condensation, and that seems to have uh, cleared up the issue. I'll power the radio on now just to show you that it works. And as you can see, the audio is still fairly clear. Next up is the AR-152, and again, this is our IP-rated radio. No issues with the sand test or being left out in the elements in snow overnight. During the dunk test, this was the second radio to show signs of being affected by immersion. Air bubbles were observed leaking from the top of the radio around the volume knob immediately after entering the tank. At around the 1 minute 45 second mark, the display and light on top went dark. After drying out, the radio was still able to power up using the same battery. The speaker, transmit, and receive all appeared to function. However, regarding the original battery, it appeared to be fairly waterlogged. And I don't know if you can see it. There's a little seam on this battery, and that's where most of the water um, was observed leaking from and so once it dried out as with the UV5R battery it was able to power up the radio for a short period of time but then it stopped working and I had to replace it with a new battery. It appears that this battery no longer holds a charge so um, I had to go with a new one. The only issue with the AR-152 that I've noticed the display, like the display with the UV-5R, is still legible. And I'll, I'll just turn this on really quick just to show you. This one works as well. But regarding the display, there is a icon that um, shows you if the battery is uh, charged 100% or not. shows you the, the power level, basically. And it does indicate that it's it's low. And I did charge the new battery before uh, powering up the radio, so I'm fairly certain the battery is fully charged. I think that the um, power level icon was probably damaged by uh, being submerged in, in the uh, dunk tank. So um, other than that, the radio, uh, it works. And... Um, I don't know if this particular radio is indicative of the other Air 52s out there, but this particular one does not appear to be waterproof. And I know this is a small sample size, it's one radio, but uh, that's what I'm observing so far. And it appears to um, be performing about like the UV-5R is right now. So um, the next test is the drop test. 
and I'll drop each radio from a height of three feet onto a concrete floor three times. And following that will be the number eight shot if these radios make it to the uh, last test. Okay, first up is the AR-152. Next is the UV-5R. As you saw during the drop test, the only two issues with the AR-152 were that the volume knob came off that was easy to put back on, and the battery popped out of the radio. Other than that, it functions as expected, and it transmits and receives. I'll power it on to show you that it works. On the UV-5R, the only issue was that the battery popped out of that one and otherwise that radio also functions as expected and it also transmits and receives. So I'll turn that one on. I'll proceed to the last test where I will be using two and three quarter inch federal number eight shot and that is the same ammunition used in episode 8. Okay, first up is the AR-152. Now the UV-5R. Here's what I'm able to report after the number 8 shot stress test. I'll start with the UV-5R. If you'll recall from episode 8, the UV-5R in that stress test made it all the way to the end. After the number eight shot, it was able to transmit and receive, although the display no longer functioned and it was not legible. This UV-5R seems to have similar results as the UV-5R in episode eight. The bezel was sheared off. The display no longer is legible. However, it does power up, and it does appear that the number eight shot took out the speaker. I'm able to transmit on this radio still and I was able to transmit over my two meter repeater and conduct a test. However, uh, right now it's on the weather channel even though you can't really tell but uh, that's why it's blinking. It looks like it's still receiving for whatever it's worth and I'm able to operate the keypad still and toggle between the weather channel and my two meter repeater. But I will have to mark this one as not passing the stress test because the audio no longer works. Next is the AR-152. This one did pass and it still powers up. We did lose the volume knob. The display, like the UV-5R, is no longer legible. It no longer functions. But all the um, keypad functionality still appears to work and it still has audio and I'll turn it on to show you that it works. and I'm able to toggle back and forth between the weather channel and my two meter repeater. It does appear that the number eight shot penetrated the plastic case. When I shake the radio, I can hear the pellets rattling around in it. That was not the uh, 
situation with the UV-5R, it doesn't appear that the pellets penetrated that radio. And that is all for this video. Thank you for watching.